Hi folks, I want to bring you up to speed with something that's happening today, which is that I've developed mild symptoms of the coronavirus, that's to say a temperature and a, a persistent cough. And on the advice of the chief medical officer, I've taken a test that has come out positive. So I am working from home, I'm self-isolating, and that's entirely the right thing to do. Uh, but be in no doubt that I can continue, uh, thanks to the wizardry of modern technology, to communicate with all my top team to lead the national fight back against coronavirus. And I want to thank everybody who's involved. I want to thank, of course, above all, our amazing NHS staff. It, it was very moving last night to join in that national clap uh, for the NHS. But it's not just the NHS, it's our police, our, our social care workers, uh, teachers, everybody who works in schools, the DWP staff, uh, an amazing national effort by the public services, but also by every member of the British public who's volunteering, incredible response. 600,000 people have volunteered to take part in a great national effort to protect people from the consequences of coronavirus. I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody who's working to keep our country going through this epidemic. And we will get through it. And the way we're going to get through it is, of course, by applying the measures that you'll have heard so much about. And the more effectively we all comply with those measures, the faster our country will come through this epidemic and the faster we'll will bounce back. So thank you to everybody who's doing what I'm doing, working from home to stop the spread of the virus from household to household. That's the way we're going to win. We're going to beat it and we're going to beat it together. Stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. I've been working from home over the last couple of days because everybody who can work from home should work from home. I've also had some mild symptoms of coronavirus uh, and upon medical advice, I was tested and that test has been positive. So I'll be self-isolating here until next Thursday. Fortunately for me, the symptoms so far have been very mild. So I've been able to carry on with the work, driving forward the UK response and also being able to just say a massive thank you to everybody in the NHS working social care and right across the board on the response. I thought the uh, clap for the carers moment last night was unbelievable and so wonderful to see the whole country uniting in support for those who look after us. Uh, but I'll be continuing to do everything I can uh, to get our carers the support that they need. And I'll be doing that from here, but with no less gusto. And then from next Thursday, once I'm out of self-isolation, and I hope with no more symptoms, uh, then I'll be able to get back uh, stuck in and into the office where necessary. But the truth is that all of us can learn that working from home can be really, really effective. Good evening. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades, and this country is not alone. All over the world, we're seeing the devastating impact of this invisible killer. And so tonight, I want to update you on the latest steps we're taking to fight the disease and what you can do to help. And I want to begin by reminding you why the UK has been taking the approach that we have. Without a huge national effort to halt the growth of this virus, there will come a moment when no health service in the world could possibly cope because there won't be enough ventilators, enough intensive care beds, enough doctors and nurses. And as we've seen elsewhere in other countries that also have fantastic healthcare systems, that is the moment of real danger. To put it simply, if too many people become seriously unwell at one time, the NHS will be unable to handle it, meaning more people are likely to die, not just from coronavirus, but from other illnesses as well. So it's vital to slow the spread of the disease, because that is the way we reduce the number of people needing hospital treatment at any one time, so we can protect the NHS's ability to cope and save more lives. And that's why 
we've been asking people to stay at home during this pandemic. And though huge numbers are complying, and I thank you all, the time has now come for us all to do more. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Because the critical thing we must do to stop the disease spreading between households, that is why people will only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purposes. Shopping for basic necessities as infrequently as possible. One form of exercise a day, for example, a run, walk or cycle, alone or with members of your household. Any medical need to provide care or to help a vulnerable person. And travelling to and from work, but only where this is absolutely necessary and cannot be done from home. That's all. These are the only reasons you should leave your home. You should not be meeting friends. If your friends ask you to meet, you should say no. You should not be meeting family members who do not live in your home. You should not be going shopping except for essentials like food and medicine. And you should do this as little as you can. And use food delivery services where you can. If you don't follow the rules, the police will have the powers to enforce them, including through fines and dispersing gatherings. To ensure compliance with the government's instruction to stay at home, we will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods, including clothing and electronic stores and other premises, including libraries, playgrounds and outdoor gyms and places of worship. We'll stop all gatherings of more than two people in public, excluding people you live with. And we'll stop all social events, including weddings, baptisms and other ceremonies, but excluding funerals. Parks will remain open for exercise, but gatherings will be dispersed. No Prime Minister wants to enact measures like this. I know the damage that this disruption is doing and will do to people's lives, to their businesses and to their jobs. And that's why we've produced a huge and unprecedented programme of support, both for workers and for business. And I can assure you that we will keep these restrictions under constant review. We will look again in three weeks and relax them if the evidence shows we are able to. But at present, there are just no easy options. The way ahead is hard, and it is still true that many lives will sadly be lost. And yet it is also true that there is a clear way through. Day by day, we are strengthening our amazing NHS with 7,500 former clinicians now coming back to the service. With the time you buy, by simply staying at home, we are increasing our stocks of equipment. We are accelerating our search for treatments. We're pioneering work on a vaccine. And we are buying millions of testing kits that will enable us to turn the tide on this invisible killer. I want to thank everyone who is working flat out to beat the virus. Everyone from the supermarket staff to the transport workers to the carers to the nurses and doctors on the front line. But in this fight, we can be in no doubt that each and every one of us is directly enlisted. Each and every one of us is now obliged to join together, to halt the spread of this disease, to protect our NHS and to save many, many thousands of lives. And I know that as they have in the past, so many times, the people of this country will rise to that challenge and we will come through it stronger than ever. We will beat the coronavirus and we will beat it together. And therefore, I urge you at this moment of national emergency to stay at home, protect our NHS and save lives. Thank you.